What's up, everyone? Tara Roberts here with Fantasy Alarm, and we are talking free agency deep cuts for week seven. At quarterback, I am immediately going there with Taylor Heineke. Heineke is not a great quarterback, and I fully expect Sam Howell to get worked in at some point down the line. But if you need a streaming option for this week, and guys like Matt Ryan and Jimmy G aren't available, despite the bad matchup, Heineke is a reasonable streaming option. This week is a weird week with four significant quarterbacks on a bye week and streaming options dealing with injuries. So if you need someone who is virtually unrostered but has legitimate 20 plus fantasy point upside, look at Heineke. The commanders will likely lean on the run, but Heineke could also find value on the ground as well. At running back, let's talk about two running backs that you could use this week and one for the long haul. Last week was a strange game for Tampa Bay. My hope was that Tampa Bay would essentially run the score up on Pittsburgh and Rashad White would have increased late game value. But Pittsburgh was extremely competitive, won the game, and White's opportunities were minimal. But I am willing to take my chances again this week that Tampa Bay will figure things out against a Carolina team that is legitimately the worst team in the NFL. Even the LA Rams demolished the Panthers. If Brady can find his rhythm, get up early, and Tampa can give late game work to Rashad White, he could be a usable deep option this week. Another direction you could go is Caleb Huntley. The Falcons continue to push aggressive workload on the ground. The only problem is that it is a split backfield and the running backs receive little to no pass work. Huntley had 16 carries for 59 yards last week. He needs a touchdown to reach double-digit fantasy points. Cincinnati's defense has been strong this year, but they have been stronger against the pass. Atlanta will continue to push the run. A running back that you should be grabbing for long-term usage is Kyron Williams. He won't be active this week, but when he is, he will step into immediate opportunity with the Cam Akers unlikely to play for the Rams again this year. Williams is currently on IR and a rookie. So there will be some natural progression that needs to take place once he does finally see the field. But if the role he takes within that offense is focused on third down work, he could have interesting value in PPR. At wide receiver, I suggest that you jump on Wandale Robinson early rather than waiting to see if his role continues to grow. In Robinson's first game back from a four-game absence, he had three receptions on four targets for 37 yards and a touchdown. Not a huge game. But on just a 23% snap count, I am very encouraged. The Giants will likely ease him back into action, but the fact that he saw that production on such a limited snap count tells me that the Giants believe that he can have a critical role within this offense and perhaps be their leading receiver. Another rookie that you should grab before the rush is Tyquan Thornton. In his second game back from injury, uh, Thornton had four receptions on five targets for 37 yards and a touchdown. It's hard to trust Patriots receivers, and this is definitely a different situation than Robinson because Thornton has legitimate competition from Jacoby Myers and Devontae Parker, but Thornton is a dynamic player that can be a deep threat. And on top of that, he had three carries for 16 yards, so he could be used in creative ways to get him opportunities outside of targets. We also heard rumors that teams are looking into Kendrick Bourne's availability, which would help open up opportunities for Thornton. At tight end, let's go over two options. The first is Greg Dulcich. Dulcich was competing to be the tight end one for Denver before suffering a preseason injury. And in his first game back, he played 71% of snaps and caught two of his three targets for 44 yards and a touchdown. I don't expect Denver to flip offensive philosophy and make tight end a huge presence, but Dulcich should have no trouble leading Denver's very underwhelming tight end group. You can also grab Daniel Bellinger. Yes, we have multiple Giants options in this video. At this point, we know that Daniel Bellinger is the lead tight end for the Giants. That just doesn't afford him many opportunities because the offense is running through the ground game. But Bellinger's snap count increased significantly last week to 94% and he grabbed his second touchdown of the year. He is a deep streaming option. Thanks for watching this video. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to Fantasy Alarm, and come back next week for another round of deep waiver ads.